Good morning, guys. Um, today we're going to make something a bit different. We're going to make something for Christmas. So we're going to make a pair of earrings with uh, pave. Well, with a line of stones, something relatively easy. It's not the type of jewelry that we usually do, but we thought it's Christmas, so let's do something fun. We're going to start with just two lines. So just one line. I would say something around 11. And then another line around 30. Whoops. So 30, enter. OK, something like this. And then I'm going to make an arc. I usually do this arc over here. So just an arc like that. OK, so this is going to be the basic shape of the earring. Then I need to join it and I'm going to make a pipe. And the pipe should be, I usually use diameter instead of radius. I would say probably around five. That looks all right. Okay. Of course, you can do any measurement you want. This is just an example. And then I don't want this to be flat. So I'm going to make it rounded. Actually, what I could have done as well is just make pipe and set cap set to round, okay? That's it, that's what I want, okay? Cool, I'm gonna change to another layer because I'll rather do it that way. And then if I go to wireframe, make sure you keep this, okay? You wanna keep this line at all times because now what we're going to use is this tool over here on the spiral. We have a spiral around curve. So if I select this curve, I will automatically see all these terms. I do not want 10. I want way less than this. Let's say five, maybe. Uh, let's try this. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I might need to change it. So I want to make sure I got five. And the line finishes on both sides. OK. So that looks all right. Then I'm going to repeat the command because what I want is like two sets of lines. OK, so I'm going to go to wireframe. Spiral, spiral around curve, select this line. And now if you see. If I check this line over here. You see that I've got this. This is exactly what I want. OK, I want two sets of lines all going around each other, OK? These two lines, they would not cross each other, OK? Then, now that I got this, I want to split this surface using these lines. So to do that, what I want to do is to explode the geometry. So now I've got this, this one, and the two caps, OK? So I'm going to start with the main body. I want to leave this as it is. I'm not going to split these two. Actually, to make it easier to understand, I'm going to put it in another layer. And now I'm just going to split this surface using both of these lines. It might not work the first time, only one go. You need to split it several times, but that's fine. So I think I'm going to keep this in Metal Zero Four layer. It's good to change the layers now so you can easily understand what's going on in your file. So if you use layers, it's easier to understand the geometry. It's easier to see where the split is. It's easier to see how many surfaces you've got. So as you can see, this is still solid. Well, not solid. It's still not split. It's a surface. OK, the surface. And I'm going to split it now again. Well, I'm going to split this for the first time. I have only split this part. Now I'm going to split this one. OK, so just keep going following the colors. OK, so now I've got the main shape. And now what I have to think about is that what it's in green is going to be covered in stones. So all I would need to do is select all the green sections 
Okay. You can join it if you want. Well, actually, you should join it. And then what I'm going to use is an offset surface. And I'm going to flip it to the other side. And I'm going to make 0.4. Uh, also, make sure you choose the option solid yes here. OK. Because now it seems like we got the same thing as we did. But now this is a, this is the solid. So if I explore it, I can get rid of the outside surfaces. That's what you have to do. Uh, I accidentally deleted this line. You might want to keep it. I always tend to keep all my lines just in case. Because if you lose them and you want them back, it can be a bit annoying to replicate those lines. So I will always recommend you to keep those lines. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is going to be a pair of earrings. Studs. Okay. Okay. So I got this. Now, what I would recommend you to do is do not join it right now. Because now what I'm going to do is place a stone to lower. So if you join it, it can get a bit tricky because you will need to select each surface every time. So I would just select the surface, go to gems, go to gem place. Okay. As you can see by default, quite likely the surface is going to be inverted. So you might need to go here and do flip. Okay. So this is going to be probably color stones. So I want to make sure I'm not going any smaller than 1.2, 1.3. It really depends on uh, which gemstone you're using. Of course, if you use diamonds, you can go smaller. And I'm just going to go quite big in here. Okay. okay, you can see now this is another surface. So that's why my stone is not really working there. I need to repeat the same process here. I need to use a uh, gem placer. Sorry, not this one. I need to use gem placer and place another stone in there. Okay, here another one, another one, and here again. Okay, so this process might take a bit of time, but as you can see, you are filling up the entire chain of its stones. Here we might need to go a bit smaller. Also remember that if you press W and S on the keyboard, you will place the stone up and down, okay? So I make it bigger and smaller using the key, the Q key on the keyboard and the E on the keyboard as well. Okay. Remember that you need to consider a bit of space for the Bronx. So we would make sure you have no room around the stone. Okay, I'm going to save it. I should have saved it before, but I forgot. So now I've got the stones in place. Now I want to add the prongs for it. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of using gems, I'm going to use prong surface. Here, it's a slightly more annoying. This is something that we're working on right now, but by default, on the prong surface command, we do not have a flip option. So you will have in another version, in a new version, quite likely you're going to have an option here to flip surface. What happens if you don't have that tool yet? So you need to accept and manually flip the geometry. So just, just write down flip. So now it has been flipped. So now if I use round surface, it's going to work. You see? And it works exactly the same way. Just using the keyboard to make it bigger or smaller. Okay. So I'm just going to start putting my prongs. And as you can see here, 
I did the node geometry, so I need to use the command again and drag it this way. And as you can see, the geometry has been flipped. So I need to select the surface, the flip, and again, from the surface, and now it's fine. I'm going to use this for render, so the clothes might not be production ready. So just make sure that the prongs, sorry, the claws are big enough for setting. Okay, so this is our cane, our earring. Um, well, the only thing that is left to do is just to draw a line. Could be a line. I usually draw a line, or it could just be a sphere, really. Here's the place where I would put the little boolean difference for the post. Okay. I would put it either here, so it's hanging from quite, no, actually, it should be here. Uh, it should be along here. Okay. This is where the post should be. So, what I would do is just make a sphere. So I make a pipe and make it like at least 0.8. Okay. And then I would make a boolean. But before I do that, I will need to join this back again. And now we'll make a boolean. Okay. Make sure it's in the center. Not so deep, of course. And we'll just do this. And now we've made boolean from this and this. Okay. So that's it. Um, of course, I would run the cutter for the stones. And that's it. That would be ready for production. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.